Hi, and welcome and Happy New Year. I hope everyone is having a good day. This is Jennifer McGuire, and today I have some quick coloring die cut hacks for you. So a lot of times I get some beautiful dies that have lots of detail to them, but when you cut them out from one color, they look pretty flat and bland. You could add coloring or watercolor to them, but sometimes that takes me too long. So I thought it'd be fun today to show you how to add some shading, highlights, and color to die cuts, but how to do it super quick. So it will save you a lot of time. I have three examples for you, and I'm going to start with the most complicated one first, but I have other tips to share later, so be sure to stay tuned for that. This is my first card, and it features a bouquet of die cuts. All of these dies are from the Hero Arts January My Monthly Hero Kit. This large kit includes a 4x6 stamp set, lots of dies, some specialty papers, and more. Now this kit costs about half the value, so it's a really good deal, and there are many ways to use it, which I'll show you today. Here's a closer look at all of the dies included in the kit. You can see there are lots of flower, butterfly, and leaf dies with detail. Then there is an envelope die and a little wrap for a bouquet of flowers. And then there is a sentiment strip die, and I'm going to show you how to use all of these today. Along with this, in the kit, there is this 4x6 stamp set. So it has lots of sentiments, a wonderful newsprint backdrop, and little additions that you can add to any envelope that you have. Let's get started by doing a bunch of die cutting. This is an excellent opportunity to use any scraps that you may have. But me, I decided to use full sheets and cut pieces out because I had a color combo sitting together of some sheets that I wanted to use today, and that's what I have here. I do have linked below all the cardstock colors that I used in this video. So what I'm doing is taping dies to whatever color cardstock I want to cut, and then I trim around that. This way I can die cut a bunch at once. I'm using my Gemini Junior die cut machine, but you could use any die cut machine you may have. So I'm putting them all between my plates, running them through my machine, and I already have a bunch of die cuts. These die cuts will of course be a single color, so we're going to change them up to make them look a little more realistic using tools you likely already have. Now whenever I die cut a flower, I did also cut it from green too, so that I could cut the stem, stem off and glue the two pieces together. Okay, so take a look at my completed card here. You see those peach flowers, see how there's white along the edges, darker color deep in the flower. That's what we're going to do first. So I have a green flower here. I'm going to cut the stem off. I'll only use the stem of this. And then the peach flower top. Using a sponge dauber and Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink, I'm just applying some white pigment ink to the tips of my die cut, just along the edges. And what's cool is the details that are cut into this die cut that are made by the die catch some of that white ink too. Now I'm going in with Hero Arts Pale Tomato Ink and adding some darker color towards the base of the flower. And now coming back and adding a little more with my white pigment ink. So by adding darker color towards the bottom and then some white pigment ink towards the tips or the cut edges of the die cut, you can really transform a single cardstock colored die cut. Now I'm going to do the same on my green stem. So I added some darker green ink. This is uh, fresh lawn ink from Hero Arts. And I actually skipped the white pigment ink on that since it's a very tiny stem. And now I'm just gluing the two pieces together. Now I realize I cut off the little leaves at the bottom of the flower. So to fix that mistake, I'm going and inking those up and I'll glue those to the flower base also. Should have left those on, but I didn't want this flower to go to waste by having to recut it. So I'm just going to glue them back in place. So there we completely changed the look of this flower by adding a bit of ink to the cut edges of the die cut. And here's a comparison with the flower that doesn't have any ink. You can see how it completely changed the look. Any white pigment ink would work for this and any inking tool would work. I just use sponge daubers because they're great for getting into tiny areas. Small blending brushes would work great too. Here's another flower top that I added some darker ink towards the bottom center. And now I'm going in with my sponge dauber and my white pigment ink and adding ink to the outside edges and also to those cut details inside of the flower die cut. That really helps also to make this look more realistic and makes it look dimensional too. 
Now, an obvious other way to change up the look of simple die cuts is to do coloring with, say, Copic markers. And I'll link to a video where I show how to do that. But this technique is much faster, and I'm able to make more die cuts very quickly. I did use a brown marker just to add some color to the center of this flower, but if you wanted to, you could ink use ink too. I didn't take any time to make sure it was perfect. You just want to add color quickly. Now for this leaf, I'm putting some Green Hills ink down with a sponge dauber down the center of the leaves. And then on the tip of the leaves, I'm adding some white pigment ink. Only takes a few seconds to do and it really changes the look. You can see a before and after of these die cuts. If you wanted, you could add even more intense color to this, maybe add some darker green to it, but I wanted to go for a soft look today. Here's a little rosebud. I just added a little bit of pale tomato ink along the top side and bottom. Then I'm going to come in with the white pigment ink, go along that cut edge, and then also this detail cut edge. And it's amazing how this really transforms how that looks from plain cardstock. I personally enjoy using my inks. So this is much faster for me and much more enjoyable and less pressure than coming up with the perfect coloring using markers or watercolor. Now check out how I changed this white die cut. I used some soft vanilla Hero Arts ink. You could use any inks for these, by the way. Applied some towards the little flowers and I left the edges kind of white. Now I couldn't get in there with my green ink and a sponge dauber, so I'm just coloring the stem very quickly with a green marker. Then adding some darker yellow dots to the flower, just little shadow dots down towards the bottom of them. And it completely gives you a very quick colored look. And I just started with white cardstock scrap. Now as I just show you a few others that I've inked here, I wanted to mention that you could mix colors together. You could start with yellow cardstock and maybe add red to it and a little bit of white to kind of get a blended peach look. You could go more intense with the colors or go softer. And again, use markers if you're more comfortable with that. And I also find this works with other shape die cuts too, especially the white pigment ink trick. So say you have a heart die cut, you could just rub white pigment ink around the edges to kind of give it a little bit of highlight. So try this with whatever dies that you may have, especially those that have detail cuts like this one. It really makes a big difference in the end. So I continued to make a bunch of flowers and of course I made extras that I could save for future cards, including another card I'll show you in this video. Now that I have all my flowers and leaves ready, let's create that little newspaper wrap that will hold our bouquet. I use that newspaper wrap die that's included in the kit. Sorry, my head's in the way here. And I die cut it from Simon Says Stamp Fog Ink. Now I'm using the newsprint image that's included in the kit also to stamp on the front and back using Hero Arts Soft Granite Ink, which is my favorite kind of medium gray ink. I'm stamping on the front and the back so that when I fold it up, you'll see newsprint on all of the folds. All I have to do is reinforce the score lines that the die makes, just using my bone folder, and there we have our newspaper wrap for our bouquet of flowers. Now you could use this wrap die along with other stamped images or stamped florals that you may have. So there's many ways that you can use it, but it works perfectly with the dies included in the kit. I wanted to wrap some string around this to create a bow on the front. So I'm putting some tape on the back just to hold it in place so that it doesn't keep sliding down as I tie my bow. Now on the front, I'm just going to start by creating a knot. Then I use my self-holding tweezers. These tweezers pinch things closed. So what I'm going to do is put the tweezers right onto the knot. This will hold that knot in place while I tie my bow and I don't have to worry about it loosening. This is a big time saver for me because I fumble too much with it if I don't have those tweezers to hold them. Once the bow is tied, I can remove the tweezers and just tighten my bow until it's the size that I want. I wanted to add a lot of detail to this card, so I decided to use a white on white die cut for the background of my note card. I used the Hero Arts Window on Love Confetti die, which I've used before in videos. Die cut it twice from white cardstock and glued those on top of each other and then onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I just like that subtle textured background. I thought it was a perfect backdrop for our bouquet. I'm using some temporary tape to hold our little wrap on the front of the card because I wasn't sure how high or low I wanted it to be. 
and I'm putting all my little die cuts in place using foam tape, but I'm putting them down lightly so I can move them around until I'm happy with the arrangement. Once I'm happy with where everything is, I'm going to go ahead and put some liquid adhesive behind everything, just to make sure that it all stays put. A tiny dot of liquid adhesive is all you need. If you want some dimension behind some, you can use little foam squares, put them on the end of a craft knife, then lift up your die cut, drop the foam piece behind it, and then pull the craft knife away. To finish off the card, I added a Thinking of You sentiment strip, and I'll show you how I created that on a card later in this video. And I also added some Lucy's Cards Buried Pearls. Just wanted a bit of darker color, pops of color here and there, so I tucked them into my bouquet. By the way, if you have trouble arranging die cuts like this and getting them perfectly right and glued into your card, I recommend using Press and Seal. Now, I didn't do it in this video because I wanted to kind of wing it, but you could use the Press and Seal trick, and I will link to a video showing that here in case you want to check that out. And here you can see how much impact you add to those simple colored die cuts by adding a little bit of darker ink and some white pigment ink to the edges. And by the way, before we move on to the next card, I wanted to mention that Hero Arts also just came out with a flower bouquet pieces stamp set. So if you prefer to make a, a bouquet out of stamped images instead of die cuts, be sure to check this out. I think it would be fun to create a little stamped floral bouquet and put it on that newsprint backdrop, that little stamp on the left that comes with the kit. That'd be a really fun card design. Okay, a similar design to the one I just mentioned, but using a single die cut flower is this card here, and I have some additional tips for creating colorful die cuts. Now remember the rose that I created earlier with a little bit of darker ink and some white pigment ink on the edges? Well, I thought I'd step it up a bit by adding some white colored pencil. If you don't have white pigment ink, you could just use the colored pencil if you want. And you just add some white near the cut edges on the die cut. I will link to the white pencils that I like best for doing this. They're actually sold individually if you want, but if you have a colored pencil set, many include a white pencil that would work for this. Now you can put down more pressure for a more intense look or less pressure for a softer look, but it's another great way to add quick coloring to a die cut. I thought I'd also show you another thing I like to do with die cuts. Here I'm taking a leaf die cut that I added some white pigment ink to the edges and some white colored pencil. And I'm cutting off a few of the leaves and I'm going to put my rosebud at the top of this. This way I have a rose stem with some leaves attached to it. So it's fun to kind of change things up and get a different look by mixing and matching different pieces of die cuts. I decided to add a little bit more white highlight to my leaves by doing some color pencil right along the top cut edge. And there we have a really nice rose that I'm going to make the focal point of the card. So I spent a little more time on it, but really it only takes a few minutes. I started with simple flat colors of cardstock and gave it the look of dimension. Okay, now the rest of this card is very simple. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card, and I'm using my Misty stamping tool to stamp the newsprint image with Hero Art's soft granite ink. Under that, I will stamp a happy birthday message, and both of these images are included in that monthly hero kit that I showed you at the beginning of this video. I then am going to put some foam tape behind the bigger portions of my flower, and then liquid adhesive on the stem only, on the back of the stem. I will then trim off a little bit of the bottom of the stem so it's not as long and it fits better onto my newsprint area. Once I have my rose exactly where I want it, I can go ahead and press the stem down onto the note card and that'll hold it in place. And then I still have dimension behind the leaves and the petal just to give it a little bit of interest. So this is a super quick card design that you could do with any die cut. You could do a butterfly, a heart, whatever you want. And by adding those details to the die cut, it makes a big difference on a simple design. By the way, I really like the look of that little newsprint background with an image on top. I thought it'd be fun to do the same with this Hero Arts Cup of Love stamp set. That's another new one on the right. You could actually stamp the cup, one of those cups, onto a note card, mask it, and then do the newsprint over it. Remove the mask, and you have a one-layer card that has a, the newsprint backdrop with the cup in the front. Then you could add color, a stamped image, and you're good to go. Just wanted to show you that set. I didn't get a chance to use it, but I thought it'd be great with these other products that I'm showing. 
Okay, my last card today shows another way to add some detail to a simple die cut. Now for this one, I'm using the butterfly that's included in the My Monthly Hero Kit. And I die cut it from Hero Arts Lapis Blue cardstock, which is a favorite color of mine. I'm using a sponge dauber to put Hero Arts Navy ink towards the center of the butterfly. And then I'm going to come in once again with the Hero Arts White Pigment ink and a sponge dauber and apply this ink just to the tips of the butterfly. By doing those two steps, you can see the big difference you already have in this die cut. But I'm going to do a little more to it. This die provides all those little cut details inside of the butterfly die cut. What I'm doing is using my Stardust glitter pen to trace those little die cut lines, just to enhance them and make them stand out a bit more. I'm only going to do this on half of the butterfly and then hold it up so you can see what it looks like before and after and how it really makes this die cut pop and stand out even more. So what started as a flat blue die cut now has more life to it. Another thing you could do is use a white gel pen to trace those lines or even a black pen. Just try whatever you may have. Next, I wanted to get my background ready and I'm using the new Hero Arts Togetherness Flower Bouquet stamp set. That large flower bouquet is perfect for coloring, but I thought it would also be fun for a subtle background on this card. So I have a piece of white cardstock that is four by five and a quarter, and I'm going to stamp this floral image repeatedly with Hero Arts Soft Sky ink. Any soft color would work here. We don't want it to be too distracting from what we put on top, and the soft blue matched nicely with the butterfly that we created. So all I'm going to do is start in one corner and then work my way around to fill in the entire white piece. It's okay if there's a gap in the center because our embellishments will go there. So just make sure that the outside edges are covered nicely. Next, I'm taking the envelope die that's included in the Hero Arts kit that I showed you at the beginning of this video. I die cut it here from Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock. I also stamped the newsprint image on white cardstock and trimmed it down to look like a letter coming out from it. Okay, so now I'm going to assemble my card. I have my background here and a piece of Simon Says Stamp Craft Foam. I'm putting liquid adhesive on that and gluing it to the back of our stamped panel. And then I'll glue that onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. So we have even raised dimension. I changed my mind and made my envelope out of Gina K silver metallic cardstock instead. I thought that silver was a nice touch with this butterfly. I glued all of the pieces together, made sure I used foam tape behind the wings and liquid adhesive on the body. That way I could make it look like the wings were raised off the paper a bit. So you could have any little die cuts coming out of these envelopes. You could have little uh, stamped images coming out, anything you want. And I thought this butterfly was a perfect fit. Okay, next I wanted to show you how to create a sentiment strip using the sentiment strip die that's included in that My Monthly Hero Arts kit. Here's a look at that die again. It's in the top right of this image. Notice that one edge is flat and one has a flag. That allows you to die cut your sentiment strip with either option. So I'm going to show you how to do the flag on both ends. I went ahead and stamped my sentiment onto white cardstock, and I also die cut the banner from some scrap cardstock. I'm going to line up the negative space of my banner die right around my sentiment. I then will pop the die into that negative space and tape it there with some temporary tape and run it through my die cut machine. This will cut one edge of my sentiment strip, so you can see that left edge is done. Now I'm going to take the die and rotate it, put the flag end lined up on the right side of my sentiment, line up the sides of the die with the sides of my sentiment strip, run it through again, and there we have a perfect sentiment strip sized perfectly for this sentiment. I will then put foam tape on the ends of this and add it right on top of my envelope. I also decided to add some black glaze pen to the body and antenna of my butterfly. This is a shiny black that gives a little bit of dimension, so it helps to make this butterfly look even more realistic. So here's a look at the completed card. I added a few Lucy's Cards pearls that are light blue here and there just for a little accent. I like how you could use this envelope and have anything peeking out from it. And it was fun to put that butterfly that I enhanced with the ink and the glitter pen. You can see how spending just a few minutes adding that to your die cut really changes the look of it. 
By the way, I had mentioned that it'd be fun to have stamped images come out of this envelope die. Here's an image I think would be fun. I didn't have time to do this idea either, but wanted to share with you. This is a new Hero Arts Unbearably Thankful stamp set. See that bear holding the flowers on his back? I thought it'd be fun to have him peeking out from the envelope and have a sentiment stamped underneath it. It's fun to mix and match different sets together to get different looks and get more out of your products. Okay, there you have it, a fun hack for adding color to your die cuts. You just start with colored cardstock scraps, add those bit of details, and it really transforms the look. If you're interested in a closer look at any of these products, I do have them linked below my YouTube description. And in the middle here, I have two other videos that share ideas for making your die cuts look even better. I appreciate you spending this time with me. I hope your new year is off to a good start and we'll see you again very soon.